Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas and it's going to be yet another session in this lecture series on engineering mechanics. Well, today we're going to continue with our problem series on work and energy principle and its applications. So in that regard, this is going to be a very interesting problem. And this is something that I refer to as the dancing spring problem. So without further ado, let's kick off. So here we go. I'll be reading the question for you and simultaneously we'll be making the diagram. So it goes like this a weight w is equal to 50 newton is suspended from a spring of stiffness 10 newton per centimeter okay let me write all the given data so there is a weight okay which has been suspended from a spring okay from one end of the spring rather this is 50 newtons and secondly this spring is going to be having a stiffness of k is equal to 10 newton per centimeter which essentially means that in order to deform the spring the whether it, it it is compression or elongation in order to deform that spring by an amount of 10 uh, by an amount of one centimeter you need to apply a load of 10 newtons that's it now here is the figure this initially represents the relaxed state or the undeformed state of the spring no load was actually acting on the spring okay so no problem whatsoever the spring is absolutely chilling out what happens is this we suspend a load of W is equal to 50 newtons over here and because of that load there is going to be some sort of elongation in the spring because the load is actually going to act in the downward direction. So obviously there is going to be some elongation and this over here is what I refer to as position 1 and let's say this is the 0th position. Okay. Now guys what we can actually do is we know how much load is acting onto the spring based on that load and based on the stiffness of the spring we can actually calculate this elongation let's say this is represented by x1 and we have this formula very popular one f is equal to kx let's say for position 1 the force applied is f1 and the deformation or the elongation is x1 so you know how much force is applied it's 50 newtons so just put in the value 50 over here you know how much the spring stiffness is that's 10 newton per centimeter that has to be multiplied with this x1 over here and the value of x1 will work out as 5 centimeters so this is a very important result um, it's, it's, it will be better if I can highlight this done okay now let me again kick off with a pen so this was all about when a load was hung because of which there is going to be some sort of deformation that deformation worked out as 5 centimeters and the spring has again achieved its state of equilibrium calculate the potential energy of the system with respect to this position now this is the position about which all the calculations have to be carried out so let's say this is referred to as datum okay all the calculation be it the potential energy due to gravity be it the potential energy of the spring itself to compression or elongation all those sorts of calculation has to be done has to be carried out with respect to this line over here as the reference line as the datum now now let's read this further calculate the potential energy of the system with respect to this position if the weight is pulled down to the flow by a distance of 10 centimeters so it's something like this so there is a floor over here okay flow this line this dotted line essentially is representing the flow so what we've basically done is we've pulled this weight further downwards by an amount of how much 10 centimeters okay so this distance is 10 centimeters let me put it up over here this is 10 centimeters with respect to this datum and with respect to this undeformed state this distance is going to be how much it's going to be equal to 10 plus this x1 x1 is nothing but 5 centimeters so that's we have already seen that okay okay now if I were to tell you this distance let's say this is position number 2 then this has got to be x2 done what's next <clears throat> if the weight is then released well guys now there was a spring like this over here we actually hung a weight over here 50 newtons so it pulled the spring in the downward direction by an amount of how much 5 centimeters then this weight was taken further downwards until it hit the flow okay by a distance of 10 centimeters but with respect to this data okay 
what will happen this weight is going to bounce back bounce back okay very high above that height with respect to the flow is something that we need to work out right if the weight is then released what is the maximum height above the flow that the weight w will attain after the after the release so this is the final event in the timeline and that's exactly what happens final position now now let's say this is represented by x okay and uh, if i were to calculate this is the undeformed state of the spring uh, this is this is zero this is one this is position two and this is the final position let's say this is position three so with respect to this undeformed position let's say this is x3 right all okay now let's start the business so the first thing first thing that we need to find out let me write this over here to find number one okay potential energy of the system with respect to the position if the weight is pulled down to the flow by a distance of 10 centimeters here we need to find the total energy energy at 2 is something that we need to work out and secondly what we need to find is maximum height above the flow height above the flow height above the flow so you, you can see this is where the floor is so height above the floor is this one okay this is the total height that the block is going to achieve after having been released um, uh, from the floor itself okay that's the height so this height this height over here let's say this is h is actually a summation of x and this 10 centimeter so x plus 10 so once you get the value of this x once you know how much high it is uh, this block has gone from the datum level you can actually add 10 to it and you can actually get the value of how high it is above the flow that can be done very easily but initially you have to find this value of x all right guys let's kick off and here we go okay so the kinetic uh, not kinetic but the energy total energy at point two is to be worked out so how can that be done well for that here it is energy at two is nothing but a summation of potential energy due to the weight okay or the force of gravity this 50 newtons plus again the potential energy okay of the spring now if you if you try to compress the spring or even if you try to elongate the spring what are you doing you are doing work on the spring and in that process some energy will be stored inside it and that essentially is referred to as the potential energy of the spring right so potential energy due to weight weight is how much 50 newtons okay so we are essentially doing all the calculations with respect to this line okay position one at two we are calculating the energy so load for uh, any distance or any height in the upward direction positive in the downward direction negative so what we'll do is weight is how much it's 50 that is mg into h h since it is in the downward sense it has to be taken with a negative sign so that's going to be minus 10 okay done what's next now this is going to be very interesting potential energy of the spring plus we know the potential energy of the spring okay is given by let me write the formula over here potential energy with respect to this as datum we are finding the potential energy of the spring over here it's going to be equal to half of kx square but there are essentially two positions kx square so if you take this as the final position x2 square minus x1 square it's going to be x2 square minus x1 square so how much is x2 if you watch carefully x2 is nothing but this 10 plus this 5 that is 15 let me write it over here x2 is nothing but 15 so let's let's put in the values let's put in the values let's say we are doing it over here here half of k is nothing but 10 x2 is how much 15 square minus x1 x1 with respect to this relaxed state that's x1 which is equal to 5 okay now this calculation is pretty easy 15 square minus 5 square is 200 um, 200 into 10 is 2000 2000 divided by 2 is nothing but 
1000 itself so the potential energy of the spring is working out as 1000 newton centimeter okay so that's 1000 newton centimeter and finally the total energy at position 2 will be seen as this 500 newton centimeters well the unit is a bit absurd but we have to work with this okay right now i'm not going to change the unit to uh, newton meters okay let's proceed so the first thing first stuff has been done what we need to find right now is the value of x right this x is with respect to the datum line how high at what height is this block okay from the datum that is something that we need to work out okay now guys what i'll do is i'll try to figure out the total energy at position 3 and then that energy at 3 will be equal to that energy at 2 okay that is the law of conservation of energy energy at each and every point remains constant fine let's kick off but there is something else that i need to tell you let, let me go ahead and tell you this there was one more way by the help of which this spring energy could have been calculated it's it's something like this let me tell you this is what i call or this is what i refer to as the force deflection plot this is deflection over here and that's force initially initially let me have a red color rather yeah initially no forces in position zero no forces were acting so since there was no force there was no deflection then what happened we applied a force of 50 newtons say somewhere here that's that's precisely position number one f1 was 50 corresponding to which there was a deflection of 5 centimeters so this is x1 that's 5 now this is the intersection so this essentially is position number one we further pulled the spring downwards okay by a distance of how much 10 centimeters so in totality this is this is going to be how much this was 10 so in totality in totality from here to here this position 2 will have total total deformation of how much this is going to be 10 plus this much 5 that is 15 that's 15 corresponding to which there is obviously going to be an increased amount of force and this is position number 2 and this force is let's say f2 we already know what the value of f1 and f2 is f1 is nothing but uh, 50 newtons okay and where is f2 if okay we, we we don't have to worry about that now this is the plot okay let me write this this is 50 newtons and f2 was how much well that can be calculated f2 is equal to what kx2 this is pretty simple okay now k is how much that's 10 multiplied by x2 x2 is nothing but 15 that's 15 so f2 is working out as 150 newtons pretty easy 150 newtons okay and if i were to calculate the total energy um generated stored in the spring in position 2 it will be area under this line right so you have to calculate the area of this four sided figure which eventually which eventually can be divided into two separate portions so this over here is half of base into height this is how much from here to here that's 10 into height this is the height from here to here that is 150 minus 50 that's 100 and this is going to work out as 500 and then this figure this rectangle over here this base is how much 10 multiplied by this height is how much that's 50 10 times of 50 is again 500 so on adding these two these two fellows we are going to get the total value of the energy stored in the spring in position 2 which is going to be obviously 500 plus 500 and that's 1000 so these are the two ways um, by the help of which spring potential energy can be computed one is the absolute formula approach and the second one is the graphical approach and the graphical approach is something which i really endorse now let's worry about this height above the flow okay let's worry about potential energy of the total energy right in position 3 which again will be a sum of the potential energy due to weight or due to the force of gravity plus potential energy of the spring itself all right so this is going to be very interesting guys 
potential energy due to weight. So this is the datum and this is where we are right now. Okay, now you can clearly see this x is above the datum, so positive x, right? How much is the force or the weight? 50. So this is going to be 50x plus, plus potential energy of the spring. Okay, in position 3, we have to figure out the potential energy of the spring. This is very interesting. So it's going to be half of kx square. Okay, let me write this formula somewhere else. Um, potential energy of the spring in position 3 is equal to half of k right with respect to this as datum so x3 square minus x1 square x3 square minus x1 square now guys if you watch carefully x3 x3 will be equal to what how much is x3 gonna be equal to 5 minus of x 5 minus x so in place of this x3 square what I can put up is this is k is 10 10 by 2 is nothing but 5 so what I can write is 5 minus x square okay minus let me put a bar bracket over here minus x1 square so x1 is nothing but 5 only okay it's 5 minus 5 square you just have to do this calculation and this is going to be very interesting 5 times of 5 minus x so that's 25 plus x square minus um, 10 x minus 25 again 25 and 25 will cancel out what remains is only this stuff okay so that's x square minus 10 x multiplied by 5 so 5 x square minus this is 5 x square minus 50 x that's it okay so let me erase this let me have my pen again finally this potential energy of the spring in position 3 is working out as 5x square minus 50x 5x square minus 50x all right so this is the total energy of the system in position 3 that's it now what now what we'll try to do is according to the law of conservation if you write this properly law of conservation of energy there is a very important relationship energy at each and every point remains constant so based on that logic energy at 2 will be equal to energy at 3 okay so you can actually further simplify this this is 50x and this 50x are gonna cancel out each other and the only stuff remaining is this 5x square energy at 2 worked out was this 500 and the energy calculated in position 3 was 5x square. So this is pretty simple. Schoolboy stuff, 100 is equal to x square. So the value of x will be equal to how much? Under root of 100, is, that is 10. x is equal to 10 centimeters. So this is how much? This is 10 centimeters. Okay, from the datum line and above. So with respect to the flow, it's going to be 10 plus x. So height. Um, that the block will achieve above the flow height of the block from the flow is equal to how much um, this is going to be 10 plus x so 10 and 10 is nothing but 20 centimeters done and dusted so guys that was all from my side for today if you've got any doubt or query do write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and if you believe that this video tutorial on mechanics has enhanced your knowledge, then do share and like this video, subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you get a notification, you get an update. Anyways, I'm going to be back with more such videos on drawing, mechanics and many more subjects. Until then, it's a wrap. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care, have a great day and keep learning. Thank you.